Riparian vegetation is a key feature of fluvial landscapes where it plays ecological functions and provides ecosystem services for the society. In this video, we are going to learn about the life history of riparian vegetation as a basis for ecological restoration. Riparian vegetation is the complex of plant communities which are present in the so-called riparian zone. This is the interface area between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems, extending from the margins of water bodies to the edges of upland communities. These areas are characterized by gradients in biophysical conditions and ecological processes, strongly modulated by the interactions between flooding, sediment regime and vegetation dynamics. At a large scale, the species composition of the riparian vegetation varies in function of bioclimatic context. In most of the world ecoregions, the riparian communities should be dominated by trees, and for this reason, they are called riparian forest, bottomland forest, or alluvial forest. However, in regions with extreme climates, shrubs in herbaceous communities should be dominant. Life history strategies refer to the various ways that organisms use resources to carry out essential functions, like growth or reproduction, and involve the plant structures such as leaves, stems, fruits or roots that are used to carry out the different ecological functions. Riparian plants have numerous morphological, physiological and reproductive adaptations suiting them for life in the high energy and wet environment that is characteristic in the riparian zone. For example, many riparian plants are specifically adapted to cope with flooding, sediment deposition and burial and breaking of their stems, having the ability to regenerate asexually from plant fragments. Understanding life history strategies in riparian vegetation is fundamental if we are to preserve, manage or recover degraded riparian areas. Within a river basin, riparian vegetation is distributed along the hydrographic network, which typically shows a dendritic spatial structure. This spatial arrangement implies that movement of organisms, material or energy is primarily restricted to the physical network which forms ecological corridors. For example, the dendritic hydrographic network has a typical directional water flow that tends to disperse plant seeds and vegetative propagules downstream, and that enables to connect different plant populations occurring across the basin. So, the dendritic network influences patterns of riparian population dispersal by modulating the transport of the seeds in vegetative propagules. For this reason, the presence of physical barriers such as dams can disrupt the dispersal and regeneration dynamics of riparian plant communities. In addition to the connectivity along the fluvial corridor, the temporal availability of propagules is a critical factor in sustaining riparian populations along rivers because seed production and seedling establishment is strongly linked to seasonal hydrology, particularly for pioneer species such as those belonging to the family of Salicacea. This picture shows the small seeds produced by a female individual of a Salix species. In this typical pioneer riparian species, seeds are released in large amounts that compensate their short viability. Salicacia species have been found to have their phenology synchronized with hydrologic regime. This graph illustrates the propagule availability quantified for three woody species growing in riparian stands. The blue area shows the temporal variation in mean daily discharge along the year, while the three lines represent changes in the fecundity index per tree. We can observe that propagule availability was maximum shortly after the annual floods. Releasing seeds after the peak flows enables them falling in the fresh sediments deposits which have been created by previous floods. Given that seedling recruitment is dependent on floods and the availability of open seed beds, this life stage is a major demographic bottleneck for riparian species. 
In free-flowing rivers, sediment deposition from floods creates nursery sites for riparian recruitment. Extensive literature on populous recruitment identifies the intersection of the timing of declining discharges and seed release that would most favor seedling establishment. They also identify the geomorphological position in which seedlings are most likely to germinate and survive. This is where they are low enough for their roots to reach capillary moisture and avoid water stress decline, but high enough to survive ongoing fluvial processes. This has been described as the recruitment box model, which defines the stream stage patterns that enable successful establishment of riparian seedlings. Stream flow regimes are strong determinants of recruitment opportunities for native species and hydrologic alterations, either by regulation or climate change, can drive dominant shifts to introduce species that have an adaptive suite of traits. For example, river regulation in Mediterranean regions threatens to decouple seed development and dispersal from the discharge regime to which native species have evolved and may favor opportunistic species. One of the most remarkable features of riparian species is their role as ecosystem engineers modulating the physical habitat. For example, riparian plants modify flow fields to induce fine sediment deposition around plant patches at scales ranging from a few square centimeters to entire point bars. The picture illustrates this case on a gravel bar of a tributary of the Tagus River in central Portugal. As creating conditions for the establishment of other species, the biogeomorphic feedback between sediment and associated seed retention may locally improve seed deposition and plant diversity. Established plants usually grow and succession continues to more complex and mature vegetation stages until floods above some disturbance threshold cause vegetation removal. This graph shows the different growth trends among three coexistent riparian trees as a function of their geomorphological position, near and far from the channel. The contrasting growth curves illustrate the variation across the species responses to flood disturbance and soil wetness requirements. This indicates that the varying intensity of flooding within the riparian zone influences the spatial pattern of species composition. One of the consequences of these complex interactions is a dynamic mosaic of vegetation composed by patches of different age and structural features that characterize the riparian corridor at different points in time, as we can see illustrated in these figures. At the long term, Fluvial landforms and riparian vegetation communities co-develop as a result of feedbacks between plants and abiotic processes. However, the interactions between fluvial forces and riparian plants are often mediated through human alterations to river systems, such as dams. In this context, the interactions between riparian communities and fluvial processes can be modified, creating river systems increasingly distinct from non-disturbed ecological conditions. So, maintaining riparian structure, functions and dynamics is a top priority challenge of e restoration ecology. Now, Based on what you learn in this presentation, we propose you to think and summarize the main physical influences on woody riparian plants in the case of Mediterranean rivers. You can do it by filling this conceptual matrix using symbols to indicate the relative magnitude of the influence of each physical driver on the different life history strategies. You will find the proposed solution in the following slide.